Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I hope that you are enjoying your day after Christmas. Hallelujah. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope it was full of love and celebration, time to be with family, friends, maybe spend time alone. Whatever you did, I pray that it was blessed. Hope you had a wonderful holiday. And we are here. It is the Sunday after Christmas. And I do believe that God has a word for us as we pivot towards 2022. Yes, I said it. 2022. We, 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 uh, we peek it over. So let's just see what God has to say to us today. Let's just open our time in prayer. God, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us through the holidays, Lord. For you have kept our hearts, God. For those who are dealing with grief, who are dealing with loneliness, God, you've kept us. Those who are dealing with sickness and illness, God, you've kept us. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you that we had time to celebrate your son and his first advent. And we are looking forward to the second advent of Jesus when you return again for us someday. So, God, we love you. We praise you. Bless this word. Bless our time together as we share virtually online. God, will you just continue to do a work at the Way Christian Center? We thank you that there is a word for our hearts on today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, and thank God, thank God. Well, like I said, Christmas is over, and I hope that you enjoyed celebrating, celebrating the fact, like Pastor Mike preached on that powerful sermon last Sunday, about the appearances of Jesus. Aren't you happy that we serve a Savior who made appearances to the most unlikely people? Amen. The Lord loves appearing to unlikely, ordinary people. He made appearances to shepherds who were like the lowest of the low in that society. They were basically like, no, they were already deemed unclean because they worked with animals all day. No one dealt with the shepherds. And that's who God and the angels uh, uh, chose to appear to. Isn't that amazing? God appeared to teen mom, to a teen mom who was just mind, like Pastor Mike said, minding her own business. That's who Jesus appeared to. That's who God appeared to, to announce who Jesus is. God appeared to senior citizens. Amen. Come on, seasoned saints. There's a word in the house for you, too. Look at all the people who our society deems as outsiders, and that's exactly who God chose to appear to. What? Who knows what God wants to do in our lives, right? How, how are you expecting the appearances of Jesus in your life? Amen. I'm, I'm expecting and I'm waiting. And I believe that there is a, a word for us as we turn towards the new year. So we're going to start uh, tonight, today, with our scripture. It's Luke 2. If you could turn your attention to Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 39. There is a word of the Lord for us. Amen. It starts in verse 39, when Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in, Gal in Galilee. They went home. There, the child, Jesus, grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Verse 41, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12, everybody say 12, when Jesus was 12, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first. Hmm. They didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers with his cousins and them. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. Verse 45, when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. They had to backtrack. Three days later, they finally discovered him where? In the temple sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. 
All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Verse 48, his parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. Kind of sound like a little, mm, she had a little spice on that, right? Verse 49, but why did you need to search, he asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Verse 51, then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Last verse, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. May God bless God's holy word. The subject we're going to talk, to, talk about today is called Don't Lose Jesus. Come on, put it in the chat if you are watching. Can you type, don't lose Jesus? If you're sitting with somebody at home, say, neighbor, don't lose Jesus. Come on, if you're all by yourself and you're sitting alone, tell yourself, hey, self, don't lose Jesus. Amen. Well, Christmas was yesterday, and we just celebrated little baby Jesus, you know, Everybody loves little baby Jesus. Baby Jesus is so lowly, so meek, so mild. Little baby Jesus, no crying he makes. Lady, little baby Jesus is laying in the manger, just as sweet as he got the, he got the halo on his head. Like Jesus is just chilling in the hay. Everybody loves little baby Jesus. And if you're like me, I don't know, one of my favorite movies, uh, don't judge me. One of my favorite movies is Teledega Nights. Does anybody know about Teledega Nights? That is, that is my movie. And now anytime you want to like do movie quotes about Teledega Nights with me, I am here for it. Teledega Nights is hilarious, especially the one scene when Will Ferrell is at the table and they're saying the blessing and he keeps praying to little baby Jesus. And it just annoys everyone around him because they can't understand why are you still praying to little baby Jesus, right? Because we love little baby Jesus. We want Jesus to be nice and sweet and somewhere we could just tuck you away and just keep you all sweet and kind and little, right? But how many know, unlike the movie, <laughs> that Jesus grows up? Jesus grew up. And in verse 40, it says he grew up healthy and strong and he was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Somebody say Jesus grew up. He didn't stay the little sweet little baby in the manger that you could just wrap in swaddling clothes and you could just keep Jesus where you want him to be. Jesus, you stay right here in this little corner. You stay right here in this manger. No, Jesus grew up. And it says he grew up healthy and strong and strong. So my question to you today as the premise of this message is, will you let Jesus grow up in you healthy and strong? Come on, I'm already feeling my help. Will you let Jesus grow up in you? Because in our passage, we see that Mary and Joseph had to learn how to manage a transition in Jesus. Jesus was no longer a baby. Jesus was growing up. It says in this passage that Jesus was 12 years old. He was a, a tween. He was a teenager. He wasn't quite a teenager, but Jesus going through adolescence, they gave him a little freedom. You know, they was like, we ain't got to really check on you. You know, you, you growing up, we know you could do the right thing. Jesus was an amazing child, I'm, I'm assuming, that he was just, you know, they were like, Jesus, go do your thing. He was growing up. He was in adolescence. And in Jewish culture, if he was 12, he had already had his bar mitzvah, which means that he was seen as a man in this society. He was, he was viewed as, okay, you a man, you out here, you can make your own decisions. We'll, you know, we'll see you when we see you kind of thing. So they had to learn how to manage a transitioning Jesus. And something interesting happened. They had a huge dilemma because they lost Jesus. Come on, y'all. They, they, they lost him. They literally lost 
the Savior of the world. They had one job. Remember our last uh, couple of sermons back? They had one job. Hey, Mary, you're going to have this baby. Just take care of him. He's the light of the world. They had one job, and they lost baby Jesus. Can you imagine what they were going through? Can you just imagine the panic? Can you, if I was married, I'd be like, the angel's going to appear again, and I'm going to be like, it's, it's going to be bad. Like, we literally lost the Savior of the world. We have lost the Messiah. Like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Can you imagine the pain and the, 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 the franticness that filled their hearts? Because they literally, they literally lost, <laughs> lost the bread of life, the light of the world, the, the living water they lost him he was nowhere to be found there was no as of this point in the story there was no more hope for humanity it was over we're doomed because you lost Jesus so what what happens what happens in our lives when we lose sight of Jesus when you lose sight of Jesus naturally you start to panic and that's what they did you can read in this text they were panicked they had, first of all, they had to backtrack. Now, I already don't like to backtrack in a car. I, if I leave something in my house, I do not, and I'm already on the freeway, I'm not, I'd be like, oh, well, I got to take one for the team. I, if they had to backtrack walking, and it says they went and they backtracked, and it took them three days. For three days, they were frantically searching the streets of Jerusalem. That means... That when they went back, they had to go and sleep and then wake up again and, and look again. And then they had to go to sleep. And then can you imagine? They were probably out of their minds for three days searching for Jesus. Kind of feels like our lives. Hey, man, I ain't going to do Mary and Joseph like that and just put it all on them. That kind of feels like me sometimes when I'm frantically searching for love frantically searching for meaning, frantically searching for, for, for some type of purpose. What is my purpose? Frantic, frantically searching for my career, for opportunities or money or, you know, houses. I'm frantically, I know the feeling of what it looks like and what it feels like to lose sight of Jesus. So, as we look at this lesson, as we look at this, what they went through, there's a few lessons that we can learn. A few lessons we can learn from Mary and Joseph about how we will not lose Jesus in the year 2022. How many is that one of your New Year's resolutions? I am determined that I will not lose Jesus in the next year. I am determined not to lose sight of Jesus in 2022. And here are just a few lessons that we can learn from them, okay? The first lesson that we can learn from Mary and Joseph is don't assume that you have God figured out. Don't assume you have God figured out. If you go back to verse 41 and 42, it says they, they got into a rhythm. It said every year they went to Jerusalem. And they went to the festival as usual. This is what they always did from 0 to 12. This is what we've always done. They assumed he was uh, with the travelers and things. They, they just figured, like, we know this is the rhythm. This is what we do. We just always assume things will be like they are. But I don't know if you have figured out by now in your personal life, but you can't really put God in a box. <laughs> there is really no formula you can create for God. You gonna always think things are gonna go one way and surprise. Something else is gonna happen because you know, our God just likes to add a little spice in our relationship with God, right? God's not, not into doing the same old, same old. God's going to do a little something to make it interesting. You cannot control or tame God. I'm going to say it again. You can't control God, and you can't tame God. You can't put God in a little manger and tuck him in the corner. You cannot because we follow God. God doesn't follow us. Amen? They, they assume that Jesus was on their agenda. And when they really should have been checking if they were on Jesus's agenda, Mary and Joseph, they forgot the assignment. 
they lost Jesus because they assume they have God figured out. You can't figure out God. You can't even figure out your life. We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the other. There is no formula for God. So because of that, it brings me to my next point, point number two. Don't get comfortable and lose sight of purpose. Because they assume they knew what, we do this every year. It's, it's nothing. This is what we always do. They got comfortable. Did they forget 12 years later what the angel said? Did they forget the assignment? Did they remember that Jesus was truly the Messiah, the, the Savior of the world? Because it seemed like they got a little calm and a little comfortable. Jesus, you, he, he rolling with his cousins. He's somewhere back there playing around. They, they, they became real common with Jesus. Jesus, you just, we just doing what we do. They wasn't really looking after him like they should have. And Jesus had to correct them and say, you know what? I'm actually on mission. I am, I'm in, on purpose. And, you know, Mary got a little common, too. I want y'all to check out verse 48. Can y'all see verse 48? Mary, Mary almost forgot. She forgot the assignment because Jesus had to, Jesus had to check her for a minute and said his parents said, um, Mary said, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantically searching for you everywhere. And Jesus kind of came back with a clap back and said, um, excuse me, but didn't you know that I must be at my father's house? Like, it feels like it's a little... I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it too much. But maybe Jesus, they forgot, like, Joseph, Joseph was a wonderful stepfather. We thank God for Joseph. Joseph, God used Joseph powerfully. But y'all got a little comfortable, got a little common. That wasn't his father. Jesus was on purpose. Jesus had a mission. Jesus had to correct them, like, excuse me, but y'all done forgot. I'm growing up, but I'm still on purpose. I am on track. I have things to do. I'm on a mission to save the world, and I must be about my father's business. If you're looking for me, you're going to find me in my father's house. Or did y'all forget? All right, all right, all right. So the third thing we're going to learn from Mary and Joseph as we turn the corner into 2022 is that we need to be determined to be intentional with our walk with Jesus in this new year. We got to be determined to be intentional, amen? We are determined to be intentional. You know, this whole story validates the point That we always, because we can't get common with God, because you can't turn God into a formula, that's why we pray. This is why we check in with God daily. It's a daily relationship with God. We just can't wake up and assume things are going to be like they always are. I know the same thing. I wake up, I get in my car, I go to work, I come home, I eat dinner, and I go to bed. We get into these routines without even checking with God to know, like, okay, God, what is the purpose today? What is the mission today? I want to live intentional with you. Mary and Joseph forgot who Jesus was, and they were not intentional with his purpose, with his destiny. It is up to us to be intentional, intentional with what we're doing with God every day. Don't forget that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says that we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart and what? Lean not to our own understanding and in all some of your ways. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. This is why we need an intentional daily, I dare to say moment by moment, check in with God. You know your life can change in one moment. Your life can change at one day. Your life can change the course of, of, of it, it, it could just go a whole nother way that you didn't expect. That's why we can't get comfortable. We can't get common with God. We have to be intentional. And as we turn our hearts to 2022, let that be the goal of your heart. God, I will check in with you daily. I will walk with you daily. I don't want to be, I want you to get on my program. I'm getting on your program. Amen. So we learned these lessons from Mary and Joseph about how we could be more intentional with our work now as the new year approaches. And so... Um, Jesus has some goals for us, too. I want you to check out how Jesus has goals for us 
to also walk into our new year. Can you check out verse 51? We've learned lessons from Mary and Joseph, but what lessons can we learn from Jesus? Verse 51 says, after the little, you know, back and forth that they had, and Jesus had to, like, lightweight check Mary right quick. It says that 51, then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. This verse is astonishing to me. Because Jesus is God in human form. Jesus is God wrapped in flesh. Jesus is God incarnate. Jesus laid down his deity and became a human. And in this moment where Jesus was right, he was on mission and he was on purpose and they should have been on his, they should have known, catch up, catch up, Mary and Joseph, you know what I'm here for. But instead of being like, Y'all better get on my program. Jesus did something so interesting in verse 51. It says he went home with them and he was obedient to them. The son of God, the creator of all things, the creator of heaven and earth who made Mary and Joseph and everything around him, chose to humble himself and be like, you know what? You right. You're right, Mary and Joe. Let's go home. I'm going to do exactly what y'all say. Whatever you need me to do, I'm I'm here for it. What a savior. What, What kind of person, what kind of God is this? This is so good because it teaches us, number one, this is what Jesus is teaching us, that we must walk in accountability with someone. Can you, do you hear me? We all need to walk in accountability with someone. And, I, you know, everybody needs to be accountable. To we, You know, we get into our culture and we feel like, you know what, well, I'm grown. I don't need the answer to nobody or to nobody, no one. I know what I'm doing. I'm grown. But once we get into this part of our life, who can really speak into your life at this point when you feel like you're grown? Who... Who can speak into your life without you being offended? Who can you go to that's going to hold you accountable for your goals, for your hopes, for your dreams, to help you with your addictions, to help you with your bad habits? Who are you accountable to in this new year? Because this is what Jesus did. Jesus was willing to be accountable. Jesus was willing to be meek. And, you know, we don't really like that meek term. We feel like meekness, it feels like we're small or timid or we just don't know what, you know, we're all just ultra submissive. But meekness is actually an amazing quality. A meekness is that you have power under control. Like you, you're, you have authority and power, but you're able to control it. That is such a beautiful, a beautiful characteristic of Jesus. Let us be like Jesus. We can be meek. We can, we got, we got power. We know who we are, but I don't have to exert it all the time. Who are you accountable to? Who are you, dare I say the curse word, submissive to? Submissive is not a bad word. Submissive is something that we are all, we all need to be under somebody. We all need to be accountable to someone. There is someone who always needs to speak into our life that can tell us the truth about ourselves, that sees our blind sides, that sees our ugly side. Will you open up this side of you to someone in 2022? Okay, bars. Okay, second thing we're going to learn from Jesus Jesus had maturity goals. Come on, can you say maturity? Maturity. Come on, say it one more time, maturity. This is the year, 2022, that we can really lean into maturity. It says in verse 52 that Jesus grew in three things, wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. I love this because he grew in wisdom. Again, will you let baby Jesus, when you come 
into the faith. We're all baby Christians when we first come. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. When you're born again, you are a newborn in the faith. You don't know anything. You need somebody to feed you. You need somebody to walk with you. You need to learn how to stand. You need to learn how to handle adversity. But sad to say, many of us stay in an infant state. Our whole Christian life, a lot of us have been in the faith for years, and we're still on Gerber level in our faith. We're still in pampers and pull-ups. We are still have bottles and sippy cups. We're still in the infant stages of our Christianity, and Jesus is wanting to grow up in you. Can I get an amen on that? Jesus wants to grow up in you. And there's three ways. Jesus wants to grow with wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge and the capacity to make use of it. To have wisdom is to have knowledge and to know what to do with it. Um, wisdom, in fact, is a divine gift that is granted by God when Ever any believer ask, according to James 1 and 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Wisdom is available to all of us. Will you let wisdom grow up in you? We don't have to keep making the same bad decisions. We don't have to keep choosing the wrong person. We don't have to keep having bad career uh, decisions or bad business decisions or life decisions or love decisions. Let Jesus grow up in you with wisdom. It also says that Jesus increased in stature. Now, we usually think of this as a natural height of a person or an upright position, but I want to submit to you that stature is also um, the quality of uh, gain growth or development development or achievement that Jesus wants to stand up in you. Amen. Can you get that? Jesus wants to stand up with you. There needs to be some space. Come on. We need to make room for Jesus in our hearts. Jesus has been in our hearts crowded and no room to grow because we don't have capacity for Jesus. We have filled our lives with so many other things, with people, jobs, things, material things, houses, all the things. We, our lives are filled with everything but Jesus. Jesus has no room to grow or to stand upright in us. Will you let Jesus grow in stature in you, that Jesus can stand up in us. Hallelujah. That's when we could, we could face people and we could face adversity or even people we don't like, and Jesus will stand up in you. Hallelujah. And then the third thing is that Jesus increased in favor. Favor with all the people. Once Jesus grows up in you, God will give you favor with people. Finding favor means gaining approval, acceptance, or special benefits or blessings. When the favor of God is on your life, miracles happen. You get, uh, you get things that you never even thought that you would think. You get opportunities that you didn't even ask for. You get yeses where there was no way that you should have you got to know. The favor of God, the hand of God is on your life when Jesus stands up and matures in you. This is our year to mature. Amen? This is our prayer for the new year. Let Jesus grow up in you. Don't lose sight of Jesus. You know, Paul said this so well. Paul understood what it meant to birth a new church and to have a bunch of new believers, newborn believers. And this is Paul, Paul's heart. It's in Galatians 4.9. This was what Paul was pleading with the saints. And this is what I'm pleading with you as we stand on the cusp of this new year. It says, uh, Galatians 4.19. I'm sorry, Galatians 4.19. Oh, my dear children. I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue until Christ is fully formed in your lives. Come on here. Until Christ is fully formed in your life. This is the goal of our Christian life. The Christian life is not for us to be perpetual infants, that we always need somebody to pray for us, always need somebody to feed us, always need help in changing, and we need all these things. No, the goal is for Christ 
to be fully formed in us, that we will be perfect and mature. Perfect doesn't mean that we get everything right. Perfect means that we are mature. We're able to handle situations. We're able to handle adversities. We're able to handle when people talk about us. We're able to handle trials and tribulations because we have matured in the faith. We have matured in Jesus because Jesus has grown up in us. So how? I'm closing with this. How do we let Jesus grow up in us? How do we do it? First of all, we do it by being intentional with our walk with Jesus. And we are going to do it by not getting common with God. And we're not going to rely on formulas. Because you know what that is when we rely on formulas? That's called religion. And we just come and we do the same things. We sing the same things. We do the same things because this is what we've always done. That's religion. We have to give God an opportunity to break through whatever God wants to do to change it up. God's always changing it up. Will you not be common with God in this area? And the last thing, how are we going to do this? We are going to get Jesus on. We're we're not going to try to get Jesus on our agenda. We're not going to try to get Jesus on our agenda. We are going to follow Jesus his lead through daily prayer and daily check-in. God, what is on your heart? God, how do you want today to go? Lord, I have a meeting. You know, how can you give me can you give me wisdom on this? Can you help me as I go out? Lord, bless me as I'm driving on these roads. God, bless us as we're on these streets. This is a daily day-by-day intentional walk with Jesus. This is how Jesus will mature in us. In 2022, we will not lose sight of Jesus. Amen. We're going to follow him into this new year. We don't know what this new year holds. We have no idea. You look at the news, you will be confused and anxious. And we looks like we're, you know, we're about to repeat the last two years. But how many know come what may? Come what may, we're going to trust God. We're going to follow Jesus. We're going to grow in Jesus. We're going to be intentional, and we're going to let Jesus mature inside of us. Amen? Amen. Do you believe it? Let's just close in prayer. And I just feel a need just to pray for those who are really hearing this and resonating in their spirit. So if this really resonates with you, if you really want to grow up in God, if you're tired of just kind of being on that base level with your faith, come on, will you just pray with me? Lord, thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for Jesus, who is our example, who we could pattern our lives after. God, I pray that as we enter into this new season on this last Sunday of the year, God, we fully commit ourselves to you. God, we even rededicate our lives to you. We do not know what the future holds, but we know the one who holds the future. So God, we want to submit ourselves to you. We say we don't want to just be satisfied with baby Jesus like we've celebrated in this season. Baby Jesus was wonderful, but we want Jesus to grow up in us. And as Jesus is transitioning in our hearts and our lives and growing and getting stronger and wiser and more healthy, God, help us never to lose sight, never to lose sight of you. Let us always keep our eyes and our hearts focus and posture towards you. Let us not get distracted by comfortability or formulas or always doing it one way. God, will you do a new thing in us? God, will you just uh, bring us to a place where we see you and we're engaged with you on a daily basis. We're checking in with you. We're praying. We're reading the word, not for religious sake, but because we love you because we just want to be around you, because you're just wonderful. So God, we commit this time to you. Everyone who is watching, we say we dedicate our lives. And as we stand on the edge of this new year, we give you our lives and we say that we trust you. Come on, can you say that right now? Say, Lord, I trust you. God, I trust you with this new year. I trust you with 2022. I say that you are good. I say that you are in control, and I say that you are well able to take care of us. We love you so much. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen and thank God. Hey, before I leave, I never want to leave without an opportunity to let someone in, enjoy a relationship with Jesus. So if you're watching this and you don't, you never remember a time when you officially asked Jesus into your life, where you said, hey, I really want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to always take time for that person. So if that's you and you're like, hey, I really want to grow more in my faith. I want to know more about this Jesus. Will you say this prayer with me and just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you were buried and you rose again for me and for us. I invite you into my life. I invite you to be the Lord of my life. Uh, and I, I make a commitment to start to follow you today. And I know this prayer is just one part of my journey, but I commit to following after you, getting to know you, growing in my faith. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. All right, saints. So I hope you have a blessed day. Enjoy the new year. We will have a New Year's presentation for you, so make sure you, you're watching on New Year's. We'll make sure you're checking your newsletters. We'll have the time for you. But we'll see you next year. Love you so much. God bless you. And don't forget to show people the way. Bye.